The topic is generally, what's more effective, nonviolent or violent protest? My argument tonight is that the appeals, the means by which we arrive at these things, the nonviolent methods are far more effective and lead to better outcomes overall. First of all, semantics are extremely important in debate so that we know what the hell we're talking about. That's one. And just sit talking about what you would consider peaceful protesters. Aren't themselves. No, 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 no. Peaceful and nonviolent are not the same thing. <laughs> Whatever you want to call it doesn't matter. I, Those I people. Oh, didn't you just say that semantics matter in these things? They didn't do. Didn't you just argue? They didn't do, you but for, just the position, argue for this position, it doesn't. Ago, right? Yeah, that's that correct. Words matter. It was. Uh, yeah, I don't care about the semantics. Semantics place. only matter when, when it comes to you, right? But they, they yeah, in this particular so case, in this let's, particular no, no, case, no, 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 it don't no. matter. You wanted to go me for a fucking hour. You dropped Dude, if you me through the semantic fine. Go, go because, micro. Okay, go, go, go as micro as you want. Okay. It, it does Wait. matter when you're talking about a foundational argument. It, matters it doesn't when it matter when you're just being exasperated. It doesn't matter when it matters to me. Okay, I got it. Let's go. All right. Let's get her started. Thank you both so much for being here. Really appreciate the opportunity to moderate this one. I think it's a great topic. I think we got two great debaters on it. So let's just jump into brief introductions to the channels real quick. Wick TV, can you tell us a little about yourself and where people can find you? Sure can. So my name is Wick. Uh, I host debates in a cross ideological space where we come together to talk about issues, political and cultural, from the silly to the serious. You can find me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Wick TV or YouTube at wit at Slash at Wick dash TV and on Kick now as well. Uh, you can find me on Kick.com slash Wick TV. That's me. Hi. All right. Thanks so much. Uh, secondly, probably if you're watching on the Crucible, you know the next person, the founder of the Crucible, uh, and so many other things. Some shameful, but always, always entertaining. Uh, thanks so much for being here tonight, Andrew Wilson. Can you tell us a little about yourself, where they can find you. Yeah, my name is Andrew Wilson. I'm a paleoconservative. I'm the host of the one and only Crucible, fastest growing debate channel on YouTube. Happy to uh, tangle up tonight on this topic. I actually reached out to Wick. There's not that much that's very interesting that comes out of Twitch and progressive Twitch, especially is particularly boring to me. But occasionally they come up with a topic that piques my interest. And um, since all the soy jacks over there have been arguing about this incessantly, I thought that I would go ahead and weigh in. All right. Sounds good. So, uh, yeah, if both the debaters are familiar with the format, we'll get started right in. Just want to let the audience know a couple of things. One of the things that makes the Crucible unique is that we value audience participation. So any super chat that you give through the Crucible's channel will be read, even if it's critical of Andrew Wick or... Even me, I will still read it. So uh, we appreciate all those. We want to have your voice heard. Also, if you message the moderators in the chat, we will be taking call-ins in the third hour. So we're looking at roughly an hour and a half to two-hour debate, and then audience questions, call-ins, and super chats in that final hour. So we really appreciate your participation. So without further ado, we're going to get started. The topic is generally, what's more effective, nonviolent or violent protest? Andrew reached out to Wick and is the challenger on this. So what we're going to do is have seven minute intros. We're going to leave Andrew go first and give Wick the opportunity to have the first rebuttal uh, since he is the one who was challenged. So Andrew, without further ado, would you like to start your seven minute introduction? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Uh, so when it comes to the discussion of violent versus nonviolent protest and which is more effective, my position is that this is pretty clear. Um, you're, you're talking about protest in the sense of what's motivating change. Underneath, or underneath the idea of protest, violent or otherwise, um, it's simply a design of enforcement. So all rights and laws must necessarily be enforced. Enforcement requires threat of violence. In other words, all protest is essentially the use of violence, and there really isn't any way around that. Take, for example, a cake maker. Let's assume for a second that this cake maker refused to make a gay wedding cake, for instance. Now assume for a second that this cake maker is subjected to a line of LGBTQ protest, which forces a national conversation in the media. In the end, let's assume for a second that this is decided by the courts that the maker of said cake must bake it. The protests weren't technically violent in this scenario, uh, but they really actually kind of were because they were appealing to a change in enforcement, uh, which if not complied with, will use violence for compliance. All protests do this. All of them are attempting to force a change, which will require enforcement. And so all protests are really advocating for violence to some degree, or they're complicit in violence. 
Now, Wick here is going to use a series of studies to show that nonviolent protests get more results than violent protests, but this isn't really true even in that category. The studies he uses have definitional problems with what they consider to be violent. It's frustrating to say the least that leftists can't seem to understand this, but as we get into what Wick actually will have to concede is violence from his worldview, I don't see how he can possibly say that blocking roadways, things like this, aren't actually acts of violence, even though his studies won't cite those things as being acts of violence. Most of these studies I've read on this just say if it's unarmed conflict, it isn't violent and that riots don't even count as violence. Uh, it's insane. So I'm kind of curious to see where this goes. Uh, just to kind of clarify a few questions my opponent might have from the outset, uh, I think he'll probably appeal to some sort of might makes right, but I don't believe might makes right. I just believe that Mike makes. Might makes. That's it. Not that it makes right. And uh, two, I believe this question itself can kind of give you a good understanding of why sociology often asks and measures for questions that kind of logically don't make a lot of sense. So I'm, I'm kind of eager to get into this. Um, with that, I'll yield my time. Okay, excellent. Um, next, we will go to Wick. You have seven minutes, up to seven minutes. You obviously don't have to take the whole thing if you don't, but go ahead whenever you're ready. So I'll just see it at the outset that, yes, everything is violent, right? At the end of the day, enforcement mechanisms can be violent, and we are all looking for any any method that the state uses to enforce its rules could be violent. But we are absolutely, right, there is a spectrum here, and there is a far cry of a difference between trying to reach a means, right, by direct physical harmful violence versus simply coercive pressure by the state or coercive pressure by groups to try to enforce change. There is a substantive difference that I think we all understand that there is a difference between saying, hey, if you don't do this, I will beat the shit out of you versus if you don't do this, you're going to face a fine. There is a substantive difference here. So if you want to call all protest violence, okay. But then the question becomes, what types of violence are more effective than others? Because at the end of the day, I agree with you, might is. Violence is a tool. It can be used, right? And I would never argue that violence is never the answer. That is not my contention. That is not my claim. My argument is also that violence can never work. That's also just not true. We can view plenty of examples throughout history, both modern and uh, you know ancient, where violence absolutely has worked. My argument tonight, that is even when violence does work, it leads to worse outcomes than when you use less violent or if you want to use nonviolent, what is traditionally known in academic circles as nonviolent, even though I've already succeeded to you that it is a technically a form of violence, right? We can argue, right, the nonviolence, right, uh, as understood by academics is more effective as a tool. And it leads to better results. Though violence can work, that uh, it often leads to worse outcomes for the people involved. When we use nonviolent means, whether the state does this or the protesters do this, it often leads to more success and better outcomes. And I have plenty of examples that we can get to. But fair enough. Here we are. Okay. You, is that good for your opening statement? It is. All right. Uh, just to remind the audience, remember, get those super chats in. We will get to each and every one of them in the final hour of the show. Also, as we get later on, I'll remind you to reach out to the moderators in the chat here in the Crucible if you would like to call in and ask questions or yell at anyone that's participating on this panel. So I got nothing else to say. We got open debate for at least an hour and a half. Have at her. Oh, I can't, oh, hear, can't you. hear you, Andrew. You left him. Sorry. Is this Speechless violence there, right Rick. now? Is, can you guys <laughs> doing violence to him? I got you now. <laughs> can you guys hear me speaking? now? Okay. I don't know. Do you know? Yeah, I hear you, Andrew. Okay. So let's uh, let's dive into this first thing, which is sure. if you're kind of conceding that all protest is violent, then why is it that uh, we would even have a debate as to whether or not the degree of violence or what you consider to be nonviolent protest, which you've conceded is violent protest? Uh, it seems like. All of this would be necessary for whatever the outcome is, good or bad. So is your argument actually that a lesser degree of violence leads to better outcomes than a greater degree of violence? 
Well, what I'm trying to do is avoid a death initial argument, right? I don't want to get into the semantics. I will cede to whatever definition of violence that you want to use for this debate. My argument works regardless of the definition of violence that you wish to use. Um, my, my yeah, I'm not really here. talking about the definition of violence. So sure. what I'm asking, I'm asking an entirely different question. The question that I'm asking is, if you and I are in an agreement that all forms of protest can essentially be whittled down to violence, then how can you make the claim that nonviolent protests are more effective than violent protests if you've already conceded that claim? You're basically saying all protests are violence. So the only way you could really frame that is to say, I think that more violent protests are less effective than less violent protests. I don't know how you get around that. There are different categories of violence within the broad umbrella, as you would use this definition of violence that some do use. I will see to that. I don't personally use this, but for the sake of argument, we will go with it, right? Uh, this broad umbrella of violence, there are categories within that that we can separate, look at, measure and see which categories of these things, right? Whether it be um, indirect violence, such as blocking a traffic road, like which is would be indirect economic violence, like blocking a route of traffic or, um, you know, boycotts uh, would be indirect economic violence. Technically, we can differentiate those right from blowing up a, a blowing up a, a the World Trade Centers. Right. Yeah. But so then the the position. Yeah. So then I do understand. So then the position Mm -hmm. is actually whether or not utilizing less violence in protest is more effective than using more violence in protest. Is that that is, again, academically known as nonviolence. Is the thing, and and I get. What do you mean, acad? Wait, wait, wait wait a second. So when they forget, forget, hang on, hang on, hang on. Forget what's academically known. And admit to what it is that you've already conceded to, regardless of what academics consider nonviolence or not, you do indeed consider this to be violent. No, I'm I'm working within your your definition of violence. So I'm then you don't. In, you, so then do you consider these definition? So, so do you consider this to be violent protests? These these uh, uh you know lower ranks of violence, which are unarmed violence, right? or unarmed uh, protests or unarmed riots, do you actually consider those to be nonviolent? Because if not, then you have to concede on this portion there. I don't think I do, and I'll tell you why, right? Because, again, words have meaning, and those meanings change within context. When I say nonviolence and when I reference the academic definition of nonviolence, I can recognize that in your worldview, right, and with the definition you are using, nonviolence wouldn't be the correct term. However, this is what, when I say nonviolence, I am referring to a specific set of of tactics that are used, such as boycotts, stayaways, slowdowns, blocking traffic, um, all these things. It also yeah. excludes a portion of other tactics. So, so forget for, example, for a second, um, forget for, for a second mm-hmm. what you think I believe violence to be, and I'm asking you this question directly. Sure. Do you think all of those things that you just mentioned are acts of violence or not? Uh, n- I would consider them nonviolent actions personally. Yeah. OK, so if that's true, then we can get back to the debate. And I need to know then uh, how it is that you think that any of these protests aren't appealing to enforcement and thus violence. I, I need to know and that. Th- this is why. Right. I think that. It's an uninteresting take because I will just see I'll see to you that they are at the end of the day interested in changing either regime change, anti occupation, secession of territory. All these things are technically violent, sure, but I think the means to get there matters. It, it yeah, absolutely okay, does. Okay, yeah, I understand. Yeah. But if you're always appealing to violent enforcement, like for instance, if I go hire a hitman to kill somebody, I didn't actually commit any violence myself, right? Somebody else committed the violence, but I'm still just as responsible for the violence that happened because I was the architect of the enforcement mechanism, which in this case would be the hitman. But there's a substitute. So you, in other words, you can't have, you can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't say to me, listen, I don't believe that these are nonviolent. Right. But at the same time, I also believe that they're violent. That's what you're actually saying to me is that you believe this and you, I I don't know why. I, I think that you're mistaking means and ends here. 
So you could argue, right? And I think that you are, as I understand it. Um, and unfortunately, this is the most boring argument, uh, but we can have it. Is that in the end, it all leads eventually to state enforced violence. So therefore, everything used to get there is inherently violent. That is your position. No, but no, I would no, 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 that's not. There's it a distinction. Like it. There's a distinction. It's not that it all leads there. It's that it's in a direct, a direct appeal to do so. There's oh, a difference. Um, so it's not an unintentional appeal to not use enforcement mechanisms. Rather, it's a direct appeal to use enforcement mechanisms of whatever your worldview is that you're protesting for. So whatever that may be, you're using a direct methodology in which uh, to to have X system uh, utilize enforcement on behalf of your worldview. So it's not a at the end of the day, we didn't actually mean for there to be violence. It just led to violence. It's you're directly appealing to enforcement, no matter what. The whole point of like a roadblock is to gather attention to the roadblock. That way you can get media attention so that you can see some sort of change, which will then be enforced by somebody. But the means to appeal to whatever end you wish, right, absolutely matter. And that's what I'm arguing tonight, that the means in which we uh, appeal to make these changes, violent or not, right, whether they're enforced by violence or not, it does not matter because the appeal that you are making is what we are talking about here tonight. What we are talking about is which appeals, in what ways can a, a group or institution or even a state appeal to the populace or whoever they're trying to change here, um, which ways are more effective? And my argument tonight is that the appeals, the means by which we arrive at these things, the nonviolent methods are far more effective and far and, and lead to better outcomes overall. Yeah, but you still this is the problem, right, is that this is I know that that you're saying that this is a semantic argument, but it's actually mm -hmm. critical for your worldview here. So what's critical for you is you keep on saying to me what matters here is the nonviolent means for which these things are done. Yes. However, I'm not conceding to the framework that these are nonviolent means. This needs to be demonstrated by you that they're nonviolent first before we can proceed into any prescriptions that you might think you hold. So, again, you have yet to like you have yet to uh, convince me or show to me how uh, a means is the same as the ends, which is your argument. That's that's your argument that because the ends are violent, the means must be so as well. That the means must necessarily be violent because they lead to an ends or a consequence that is state enforcement, which is done by violence. Well, it and doesn't always have, have to, to be. To it doesn't have to be gap. state. And wait, wait, wait. So let me ask you a question. Sure. Let, uh, let us assume for a second that I was inside of your doorway and I mm. refused to allow you to leave your home. Have I kidnapped you? No. No. What do you think kidnapping would be? If you take me and remove me out against my will out of my home. Yeah, it has to be a removal, not a keeping you someplace that you don't want to be. That wouldn't be called kidnapping, but it would still be some sort of um, force applied. To well, me. what else would it be called? Uh, quarantine. There, is there a law that if wait, are you saying if I blockaded you inside of your home, that, physically stood inside of your door that I'd be charged with quarantining you? No, but that's what. You might not be charged with quarantine. Well, what do you think you I'd legal? be charged with? Okay, you understand that what you were doing, regardless of whether I you would be charged with it or not, is quarantining me, quarantining me in my home. No, I, I think it's kidnapping you. It, okay, it's not. It's quarantine. There's How is it not? How kidnap is, it not? is when you remove it from the home. No, you don't have to remove a person from their Why home to kidnap this, them. Can you get to your point rather than the semantics? No, well, they, first of all, semantics are extremely important in debate so that we know what the hell we're talking about. Okay. That's one. And two, it's super important to me that you understand that, yes, we need to distinguish this because we have people who blockade surround vehicles and do not allow these vehicles to move. Unlawful they're to rendered take. they're rendered completely immobile. OK, the so I am the unlawful detainment. Yeah. OK, so he, that this is my question. It's like, what what do you think unlawful detainment is? What you think that kidnapping is you must take a person out of their home? That's insane. Yes. That's not kidnapping. That That is it, or removing from where you are to somewhere else you don't want to be. Or you did not consent to be. Yes. <laughs> Otherwise, you're detaining someone. These are the words mean things like in detainment. It's is when just you the them action. There. Listen, it's just the action of abduction and holding a person captive. That's it. 
You can abduct a person. I mean, you keep saying. I mean, it is though. That's. uh, Do you want the definition? I'm reading the very definition: the action of abduction and holding a person captive. That's the definition of kidnapping. I mean, you just said that that's not true. Let me ask it in this way: if I get, if me and my wife are separated, (laughs) and I get temporary custody of my child, and the child comes to my house, which is legal, and then I refuse to leave the child leave, is that kidnapping? You're detaining it. But it's not kidnapping. If you cross state line, if you like move from your house and no, take that child elsewhere, no. yes, it is. But that would be there, an action of abduction and holding captive. That's what that. Uh, would be. I think that in the progressive worldview, specifically, that mm-hmm. uh, it's important to have nonviolence as a means of protest. Um, yes. Because I would argue that that's not the case. I've been arguing with progressive and leftists, right, to be clear, mm-hmm. for a long, long time on this. After today, uh, on Saturday, I'm going to go on President Sunday's stream, who is, by, by all means, right, on the left. Uh, and we will be arguing the same thing from that end. Uh, I am getting pushback from the left and the right on this. Yes, day. but both both sides of the left mm. would say that it would be optimal to have at least less violent encounters. I'll concede that that's true because that's what's best for, it, you know, encompassing a democratic system. Sure. That might be your the entirety of your goal. It's most certainly not my goal. What is and goal? what I'm what I'm looking at my well, right now, my goal is to get you to demonstrate your position and give me some sort of argument that is contrary to my foundational argument that all protests are appealing to enforcement on purpose. And so they're party to violence. There's no way around that. This is a problem we're having is a foundational one, because at the foundational level, I think that your point is just moot, because even if I concede to it, right, we can argue and we can I can demonstrate, right, that the means to which to mm -hmm. the means on which people appeal to the end, violent or not, of state enforcement matter. And when you do so in what categories I would consider nonviolent, when you do so using those methods, it leads to better outcomes. And it's if more you, successful. but both listen, in democratic, you have to understand what you're saying, Wick. And authoritarian. Yeah, countries. yeah, I get it. But you have to understand what you're saying. What you're saying is, is that I can agree with your framework and then change the framework. Okay, but I think your framework is just faulty. Well, then that's at, what I want its, you to prove is base. that it's faulty. Not that you think it's moot. If you concede to it, prove that it's faulty. Even, but this is the strength of my argument that even if it's not faulty, even if you are exactly I right, just demonstrated that that's not true because you, you changed not. the framework. Keep, I okay. just showed Simply you. Simply because you assert something. You want me to show you truth. again? You want the me to demonstrate it red. again? I keep asserting that the sky is red. I say it. It must be true, right, gang? The sky's red, gang. I've said it five times. It must no. make it true. You have what's not happening, yet. What you have done Wick, is you have asserted. What's happening here stop, is the opposite. You have asserted. You have asserted a thing. You're soy jacking all over the camera, Wick. Soy jacking, come on. Yeah, listen very closely one more time. Just because (laughs) if I say I'm pointing at the sky and it's red, I say the sky is red. To be clear, this is what you're doing. This is yeah. You're saying though that the sky is not red. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can't prove. Is this what? So hang on. If that's true, fine. Then we have an argument over whether or not the sky is red. This particular case, I'm giving you a demonstration. That all, all protests, every single protest which happens is an appeal to enforcement and enforcement necessarily is violence, meaning that protesters themselves know that they're appealing to violence. They know it. There's no way around it. That's the goal of the protesters to appeal to enforcement, enforcing their worldview. Can you give me an argument against that or not? Demonstrate that protesters all protesters know that they are committing violence yes How? so every single protest wants to draw attention protest to whatever to yeah whatever they want to draw attention to their protest yes do you agree that that's true that is generally one of the goals and are they trying to draw attention to that protest because they want to affect some kind of change yes are they themselves going to be the ones who enforce that change sometimes yes when, when, what times? So, uh, for example, if you are trying to enact regime change, some of the leaders of the protest movement will often put themselves up as the replacement regime. OK, so in this case, we're just sit talking about what you would consider peaceful protesters or ones who non-violent. aren't themselves. No, 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 no. Peaceful and nonviolent are not the same thing. <laughs> 
whatever you want to call it doesn't matter. I, Those I thought, people. Oh, didn't you just say that semantics matter in these things? They didn't do. You just argue. They didn't do. You but for the position, for this position, it doesn't. Ago, right. Yeah, that's that correct. Words matter. So yes, I think it absolutely <laughs> matters. The difference between <laughs> yeah, nonviolence sure. and people. Fine. Okay. Just answer the fucking question. Stop quibbling and running away from it, way. Ask if you have what you them. call nonviolent protesters, mm. are they trying to draw attention to their protests? Yes. yes, they are. They are. Okay, great. And are they trying to affect some kind of change with the protests? Of course. And will that change have to be enforced? Yes. And is all enforcement governed by the use of force, which is violence? In your worldview, yes. And I no, no, I'm asking you for yours. Don't qu say. see this is what I mean by dishonest, so, disingenuous again, quibbling. Again. Again, again, to repeat myself. Oh my God! What you a have lying to demonstrate, <laughs> right? You have to demonstrate. You just demonstrated it, Wick. You just did. Yeah, that's did, why you won't okay, answer the last please. question. I'm trying to. I'm trying. I'm trying my best here to be good faith. Perhaps I'm just a weak soy jack, if you will. Right? But please bear with me. Work Flip with it. me here. Work with me. Okay. <laughs> Work with me. So your claim was that protesters know that they are doing violence. How? Even if the fact that this is the case, that they do mm -hmm. enact violence. You have yet to demonstrate that they know that this is what they are doing, that they are not, in fact, ignorant of what they are doing. They can't be ignorant of what they're doing. You don't, if is they your argument are, that people can't be ignorant? Are, is that your argument, they motherfucker? Are, if they is that are your appealing. argument, sir, that people can't be ignorant? No, is I'm this what to give you, you are asserting? Because it You're sounds like this your mind, is what Wick. you are Calm asserting. Down, Wick. Calm down. Because, Wick. yes, I am losing my mind because it's yeah, a mind-blowing point to assert yeah, that, that you can't people refute. cannot be ignorant. Gang, yeah, you just thought you dodged the question Andrew. four times. Andrew, you people dodged the question four times, Wilson bro. Here. Okay. Didn't say Fair people enough. can't be ignorant. You just did. No, I just didn't. You just made that up. Can protesters be ignorant? Uh, well, yeah, sure, they can okay. be ignorant. But they're not. Then if they can be ignorant, what they're doing. then obviously mm -hmm. they do not necessarily know that what they are doing is enacting violence. Is it a descriptively true statement to say? that all protests are trying to appeal to enforcement and enforcement is necessarily going to use violence. Yes part, or no? The first part, no. The first part, no. Some protest is to stop enforcement. That would be new enforcement. To, to stop to... Yeah. To, if I were to protest... That would just be new enforcement, sure, bro. No, I don't think it is. If I were to protest against seatbelt laws, I don't think seatbelt laws are fair. I think that they are uh, they are our tyrannical use of the state's power against me. I don't mm -hmm. want seatbelt laws to exist anymore. Sure. And I protested and seatbelt laws were removed. Right. Is the state using force on me? They would use force on anybody who tried to enforce that you had to wear a seatbelt. It's still going to have enforcement behind it no matter what. That's stupid. Why is that stupid? Because while technically true it is not how we think of as force it's what are you so it's mean. true it's true but it's stupid yes that can be true oh, okay why yeah. is it why is it true and stupid at the same time you know what why is the sky red or the sky blue my answer to your question is i don't know and i don't because care. of the way that the atmosphere and light the light operates the, <laughs> it does not matter to the to the matter at hand again we can measure these things we can measure whether certain means to get to an end violent or not, are effective or ineffective. We can take those means, we can see how they are applied, and in what cases they are applied in what ways, and we can see the results of their application. But how do and we even get... Tonight, my yeah, argument I, tonight... I hear you, but you're starting past the framework, so it doesn't matter. Right now we're arguing the foundation of whether or not this other argument's even worth having. I'm disagreeing with the very premise of it, and so are you. You just got done laying down a case for why it is that you would still need enforcement for people who were trying to force you to do things. It's always an appeal to enforcement. Are you enforcing always. this? Are you enforcing this? On, are you doing violence to me right now by forcing me to answer your question? No. Why not? Because there's no uh, form of physical there force is, that's going but on. There is coercion, right? There is absolutely coercion, financial in nature, right? So if yeah, coerciveness I isn't violence. Question, coerciveness isn't violence, but enforcement no. is. Yeah, enforcement always necessarily is going to have the atmosphere of force behind it if it has the power of law. Whether it's protecting you from something or trying to give you the ability to do something, both mechanisms require enforcement. 
So either it's enforcement that you can't do X to me, like make me put a seatbelt on. Somebody's there with a gun to enforce that you can't do that to me. Or there's somebody there with a gun to enforce that you must do this. One or the other must be true, but both operate off of the scale of who's there to enforce those laws. But again, this is tangential to the point. It's not. It's foundational. In, for your argument, perhaps, but not for mine. Well, I don't care if it, if you don't think I, I that don't it's care great. about your argument. If either, you I mean, say like, if you say you must concede to my groundwork so that I can then make my argument, that's not an argument. I'm not conceding to your groundwork because definitionally you're agreeing with my foundation here. And so even we're, if we're, I do, my argument still holds merit and <laughs> works. It just does. Your argu- OK, so if that's true, if you're you, you are convinced that your argument passed a concession to this, if you concede that inside of your own framework, this is true, that all, whether they're negative or positive rights, must be enforced and enforcement necessarily must use violence, at least the threat of violence. Okay. Uh, Do you personally, Wick, believe that? Sure. You know what? Why not? We'll go with it. So the answer is yes. The answer is I don't know. And I, I don't necessarily care because it doesn't matter. It doesn't it doesn't matter. Okay, so you do believe it, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so from that framework, go ahead and make your argument from there. Sure. With even that framework, the method to get to enforcement absolutely matters. And nonviolent methods to get to violent enforcement, even violent enforcement, because we can and this is true, because this techniques, these nonviolent techniques, are being are being adopted by authoritarian regimes. Right? They are using these tactics very recently, right? To try to influence and which meet tactics the, are the you talking about? Means. Nonviolent tactics, such which as would... boycotts, okay. sit-ins, stayaways, slowdowns, okay. um, uh, protests, uh, blockages, uh, uh, boycotts, all these things, right? Okay. Yes, and so huh. okay. again, the means does not matter. These tools, these methods, work regardless of what they are trying to accomplish. Yeah, but what they're always trying to accomplish is a change, which is going to appeal to enforcement regardless. Okay, sure. Well, I mean, if that's true. But that doesn't make the means themselves violent. Well, yes, all all state enforcement necessarily has to have the implicit threat of violence for the enforcement. Yes. But you are you are conflating that. And what you were doing with what you were trying to say that because this might lead to a change in what the state enforces or doesn't enforce that this thing that you were doing is necessarily violent. And I just disagree. And you have yet to demonstrate that you assert. Well, you're, lot, just, you're just saying you just, that you you're just I saying just you disagree. disagree sure. But when I ask you questions about your disagreement, you end up agreeing with me again. So well, if you disagree with this fundamental, for instance, you say and then I told you right in my intro that this would happen the second I started to question you. On whether or not you and were I, and coherent. I also said this would be a semantic debate. That's boring. There we are. Yeah. Well, I mean, whatever. What? Do, I mean, I know that you guys on Twitch just like to screech, but uh, some of us actually like to have debates about things that matter. In this and particular instance, this, absolutely this matters. matters. And this is kind of why I'm. This is kind of why I'm. I'm. I'm frustrated. And I am frustrated. I'm a little annoyed because rather than have a conversation with a substantive discussion on the methods with which we can enact political change, you have decided to be like, well, everything really is violence at the end of the day. I'm doing violence. You're doing violence. Everything is violence. It's all violence, and and we can't get anywhere with that. Like, okay, I didn't say whatever. everything was violence. I, that is the serious implication because everything has no, an it's effect not a or serious potential implication. Effect. Everything I do or say or mm-hmm. every action I can take because I live in this state has a potential to influence my state in some way or shape or form. So it all is potential violence at all times. It's just no. true in your framework. No. Absolutely what I'm saying, is. No. This debate can influence. Do you do you, do you disagree that even mm-hmm. this small debate, right, can yeah. be seen by others used to influence policy change and an action of will. It's possible, correct? Sure. So we are possibly doing, by your framework, violence right now. I no. am doing violence no, right because now. It because it requires intent. Possibility exists. It requires intent. I've already told you 15 yes, times it requires, it requires yes, intent. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, but it you agree with intent. me. So the you question agree with becomes, me when we... So the when, question yeah, becomes, I've gotten into the question 15 times. trying to interrupt me. Right, but the well, you're just going becomes, on a long-winded diatribe. You're not saying anything. Just make the w- argument, dude. Okay. Give Wick a chance to finish yeah. here. But so the question becomes: Is it the intent of the protester, right, mm-hmm. to do violence? 
necessarily Knowingly that yeah. they are going to do violence. They have so, to know. So, right? so we can answer this question easily. Right. And you've I've, I've asked you now 15 times and you've answered in the affirmative on this so that we can tell mm. if you think a protester actually is there to use enforcement for their worldview on other people. They so to, they, they know have to believe it's violent. here's how they we know this. It violent, it if you happen. were to ask a protester, are they there to change the law? You agree that they would say yes if they're there to change sure. the law. Right. OK. And if you or, ask them, or, do you know or, that police have to enforce right. that law and their enforcement mechanism is going to utilize force if you don't comply? Do you think that they would pack up and go home after they knew that? No, because none, no, no one, no one. Believes, that's it. Right. No <laughs> one believes protesters. Most people do not believe. Right. That what they are doing is violent. They just don't. It, it Regardless. I know of that you what do. They I know believe that this is your belief. <laughs> Dude, listen to me. You're making a uh, word concept fallacy. When we're talking about intent, concept. Oh we, you're taught. Yeah. When you're talking about intent, that's one category. Sure. OK, so we would agree that you would need to have things like uh, intent if it came to thing like a fucking a B word. Right. If you were to set up a B word and you were to crank it over and you were to walk away and it went kablooey, blew a bunch of people up versus if you were to like be working at a chemical plant. And you, you know, accidentally mixed chemicals the incorrect way, walked away, and it and it blew up. There would be a different level there of responsibility, right? Yes. Okay. So even if we can see that that's true, if we're talking about the protesters themselves, I'm just looking for is it descriptively true, regardless of what they think, that they are actually appealing to enforcement, which is inevitably going to be violence. But that's it. Appeal to ways. To, you, the way you appeal can be violent or nonviolent. And the nonviolent means to appeal are more effective than the violent means to appeal. That's Give me, my argument. Okay. That is my okay. argument. At the end of the day, that is my mm -hmm. argument. The nonviolent means to appeal to change within a state is more effective than violent means to appeal. So whether but or not. But you categorize nonviolence as being things not, that are violent. Whether or not mm -hmm. what they are appealing to is violent or not, the nonviolent means to do so is more effective. That's my okay. argument. Okay. I just want to get your sure, position sure, sure, clear. Sure. Now you can move on from that. Um, yes. But the whole goal of the of a successful nonviolent movement mm -hmm. is to get it so that the mechanisms of the state stop enforcing these things. They mm -hmm. non they they non compliance, non obedience, call in sick, all these methods, right? So right. for example, right, during the Serbian election, ninety eight election, the butcher of the Balkans, right? Milosevic. He was overthrown peacefully, entirely nonviolently, right? Because and he ordered his security forces, the police, to fire into the protesters. He ordered them, gun them down. That was we know this because they had radios. They were able to uh, enough people had joined the movement that were involved in the apparatus of the state that they had a line. They could hear the orders coming down and things. Um, the police force did not comply. The nonviolent movement had successfully achieved their goal of pressuring appealing to enforcement to mm -hmm. not enforce the order. Right. Right. Um, and so they were able to get the butcher of the Balkans out of power in a peaceful manner and put in a brand new power structure. Right. Uh, I'm not. Uh, well, yeah, but there are problems currently with Serbia, obviously. Right. Yeah, it no, I get perfect. it. But they put no. in a br hang on. They put in a brand new power structure. Right. Yes. Okay, and this brand new power structure well, actually, can only... They, they prevented the... Because what happened was... Uh, yeah, I don't the, care about the semantics. There was a new power structure put in place. Semantics only matter when, when it comes to you, right? But they, they Yeah, in this debate, particular so case... In this let's, particular no, no, case, no, 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 it no, don't no. matter. You wanted to go for a fucking hour. You drove Dude, if you me through the semantic fine. Go, go because... micro. Okay, go we'll go, go as micro as you want. Okay. It, it does Please. matter when you're talking about a foundational argument. It, it doesn't when it matter when you're just being exasperated. It doesn't matter when it matters to me. Okay, I got it. Let's go. Okay. So yeah, no motherfucker. If you want to be semantics, we're gonna be semantics. You're gonna okay, feel go ahead. my pain, baby. Go ahead. way around that. So if you have enough people who are putting pressure on public infrastructure, the enforcement arm of the state isn't working. The reason that the state then has to step down is because otherwise the people will kill them. That's not true. That's how that works. Well, Again, then why would they step that's down? That's not true. Why would they step down then? Okay, because they cease to have the ability to enforce their will. Right. 
But they that does not have mean, the ability to not, enforce their will. These, you keep drawing these things that if this happens, this must necessarily therefore happen afterwards. And it that's does. Just not it's true. Ne yes, there these are, are necessary. Of yes. Changes which happen mm -hmm. forcefully, but do not result in the death of the people in power. Yeah, but the reason that these people are stepping down or fleeing their nations or leaving their nations of origin and things like this is because the people are going to kill them Prove it. if they don't comply. You've well, asserted it. Prove it. Sure. Well, we can do this pretty easily. The Please. only reason a leader would say, oh, shit, I have to now flee my own nation where people are overwhelmingly protesting against me, right, is because he's under duress of violence. Otherwise, why would he leave? There are plenty of reasons, right? Maybe Give me one. Mocked. Maybe they will make not he will not be able to live in the same standards he was before. The threat of him being killed doesn't necessarily have to be on the table. I recognize it in many cases. Or imprisoned. Is, but or it does in not some have way. to be on the table because you asserted that mm -hmm. the only thing that the threat of violence in any case of poor protesters is that they will physically kill the people in power. And I'm saying that's just categorically. That's untrue. what the, that's what the implicit threat is. They'll do something violent it's to the people true. in power. But that's that's demonstrably not true. Right. It's, and we can see it's demonstrably of is true. They wouldn't be fleeing their nations can, of origin. We, again, we can. <laughs> Why would they step down from power if they had nothing to fear from the people? Because the, where they are fleeing to, they still have power. Why would they step down from power unless they had something to fear from the people they were ruling? But that fear doesn't necessarily have to be the fear of death. Well, what else fears. would it there be? There are a lot of fears that you What else have, could right? it be that you're fleeing your nation, you're fleeing your own nation, and you're stepping down from power if you had nothing to fear? Shame. Um, you're fearing shame if you're you're still you're still in charge. To support all your mistresses. <laughs> like, There's plenty of fears that you can have. Having to actually work a nine to five job instead of being able to live in your palace. There are tons of fears that you can have that would cause you to flee to a place where you can still have those. So the question I had for you, Wick, is you gave a couple examples of nonviolence working. My first question that I have is, is that universal? Is nonviolence always the optimal strategy? So if I can provide examples where such as the American <laughs> Revolution, where nonviolence was attempted over and over again, it wasn't successful, and eventually weapons had to be picked up and there had to be a violent revolution. Would you be willing to concede that it's even if on average you think nonviolence is better, that sometimes it's not the preferable method? Um, so when you say preferable, I would take issue, but I would concede that sometimes violence is just necessary. Right. Like we can look at the Russian Ukraine war right now as a perfect example. Uh, Ukraine has been stripped of choice in this and violence is the necessity uh, as we are seeing that's going on. It's an unfortunate necessity. It would be preferable to do it in other ways, but there's no choice to be had. So, yes, I think it's just trivially, tr trivially true that in certain cases, violence is the only answer and because choice has been stripped. However, I would point out and say that... Um, Nonviolence, uh, even in the face of violence, can sometimes work and be effective. Um, and we are too often to lean on violence um, rather than try all avenues before we get into that violence. Yeah, that would be my answer. I okay. hope it answers the question. Okay. Uh, Andrew, you could respond if you want. If not, I got questions for you too. So, yeah, well, I mean, it always just leads back to the same thing. It's always an appeal to enforcement, it's always an appeal to violence, no matter what. It's okay. just a it's just a vicious logical circle. There's really no way out of it. But ultimately, you're still appealing to enforcement no matter what. Well, that could that could be true. But isn't yeah. it also important to talk about which tactics are the most likely to lead to the successful appeal to enforcement? Yes, maybe you could say that it's it's fine to say that uh, these tactics operate better in order to get enforcement to operate on our worldview. Fine, that's fine. But let's not kid ourselves about what you're doing. And what you're doing is you're appealing specifically. So that your worldview is enforced by an enforcement element, always. Okay, uh, Wick. If you don't have anything to add, I got more questions <laughs> for I you. Mean, like, look, we already had this debate, but I just think that again, this uh, constant need for him to say, "Accept my framework," or "We can't have this discussion," is just telling. So, you know, just give a counter argument to the framework. Give me your I'm, own. Framework. I'm waiting for your positive argument. I already gave you a positive it, argument. You, you just asserted. Do you want me to restate the positive argument uh, again? I mean, we're good. You've, you've tried yeah, I thought over so. and over again. You can, you <laughs> yeah, I did. I I don't again, know how many times idea, I could possibly state right, it. Right, that this idea that um, you're conflate, and this is a problem I'm having here overall. It's a conflation problem. If everything is violence, then uh, no, it's a logical if, if a problem. It's not conflation. It's, it's a logical issue. Is just as violent as a shooting someone. Then 
why differentiate? Why not go out and just shoot a bunch of people? Because obviously they lead to the same ends. They're the same. So fundamentally, we can't even have this discussion. And you shouldn't be really worried about someone, whether they're doing sit-ins or whether they're shooting children, because it's logically the same. And that's where this leads. And I think that we can all recognize that that's just not true. That's not the argument. That is so, absolutely the argument. Why don't Whether you give me my argument the, back? That to is me. the ends. Can you of which your can you steel man? Leads. Can you steel man this my is position? The ends to which can you steel man leads. my position, Wick? Your argument, yes, as you were trying to make it, is that because everything that is enforced by the state has to be done so at the not point by of the time, specifically by the state, right? Again, so you already fucked the saying, argument up again. Semantics saying you do this where you nitpick. You're like, well, you said the man stabbing all the children was wearing. When a did red I tell you shirt, semantics but are important? They were wearing a blue shirt. Semantics ha, ha, ha. are important with a gotcha. grounding. I got gotcha. Semantics are important oh, with the grounding oh, of an man, argument. Don't with. know anything what you're saying. Semantics are important for the grounding on. of an the man argument. Who with. was raping the children was wearing a blue Dude, shirt. Stop losing your mind and I'm listen to what's my being mind said. Because you were mindless. I am trying to Bro. descend to your level. <laughs> So for perhaps, uh, the grounding of an argument, semantics are important. You, yeah. For the absurdity, I am demonstrating mm -hmm. the absurdity of the position that you hold. That because enforcement has to be done at the point of a gun, then everything that is enforced must inherently be violent.